Hello Linux fans and welcome to yet another one of our videos. Now, I gotta tell you something. It's hard. Ubuntu ruined my life. It ruined my job. It ruined my motivation. My inspiration. My thirst for life. No joke though, Ubuntu was horrendous towards the end. Basically, before I jump into the rest of the video that is going to be about the Linux Mint installation and how I like Minux, uh, Minux Lint. Um, I guess I guess it's Minux Lint this time around. I don't know. Before we jump into this part of the video, I want to talk a little bit about Ubuntu and what actually happened after I decided I would try and figure what the hell the problem with Ubuntu was. Now, that meant figuring out the login loop that I told you guys about, I think, in the last video. I should have, I must have, I hope I did. There was this disgusting login loop and there was no way of me getting out of it. This was also one of the reasons as to why I actually didn't really want to continue on with Ubuntu simply because that's the first time I'm using it and literally out of nowhere there is a problem. I've never had this with any other of my two other installed distros. Not that I discredit myself, I just want to put it out there, you know. What I did is figured out that there was a um, something in the background, uh, I don't know, another process that was using the lock screen. And uh, of course the favorite DPKG <laughs> was also in use all of the time. <laughs> Practically, I tried, I checked out a couple of online sources as to try and actually solve it, to see what the problem was. I tried unmounting and killing some of the processes uh, while they were still running. I tried to uh, figure the names of the processes and then use the kill command. This worked for a bit. It did not help me solve the constant login loop issue. And so basically it just kept on killing processes. Then I completely decided to delete the lock screen in where it actually was hosted in the folder itself. I decided to delete that because that was another tip uh, that was supposed to help me in this whole situation. It did not. There was nothing that actually helped me. And these people, these guys on this specific website had seven or more solutions to the problem and in the end i just ended up saying well okay you know if it's not possible it's not possible i can't really do anything about it i tried logging in again to make sure that it really was stuck in this loop it really was stuck in this loop <laughs> guys there was no way of me getting out of there and i just ended up completely saying Ubuntu, you don't deserve my attention you don't deserve to be run on long side second I don't care what you want me to do. I don't care about nothing else. You go and you hide away in your own little hub because I don't like you anymore. I don't like you. <laughs> Giving such troubled experience to someone who's just literally just started using the distro is not what I would want to have or do if I were Ubuntu. Now, I fully understand that this might have also been a problem with the distro itself or with my hardware, the way I installed it, maybe I did something wrong to boot into this whole horror of loops. But holy mother of loop, there was no way that I could actually get out of there. I tried looking up whether this had happened to other previous versions of Ubuntu. It's been a problem since Ubuntu 17, version 17. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, people just tried to keep solving it. I saw on the forums that some people were not successful. Some others were. I don't know. I just had it with Ubuntu. It didn't run my games. I had so much trouble installing it and it constantly booting and it constantly lagging. And lagging into my games and lagging into absolutely everything I did. So I decided, dual boot? No, honey. You're gonna have to rethink that. I am one booting this one. And from there on out, I decided I want to install Linux Mint, which is the topic of today's video, if I didn't take up too much of our time already. <laughs> wow, I actually only spoke for five minutes. What do you know? <laughs> I feel like I spoke for like 20 already. Anyway, cute Lion King intro. Basically, what I decided doing, I'm like, I'm gonna install Linux Mint 
because everyone's been saying really good stuff about it you guys have been commenting about it i'm like you know what let me just go ahead and give it a try see what all the hype's about and i did uh i basically down it down down it i down it the iso file from the linux mint directory and burnt it onto a usb and then went to my beautiful young side the second went into the boot settings so the uefi changed the boot configuration so it would boot firstly from the usb which was necessary and then booted everything it looked like actually it didn't even look like it was installing anything now that i think about it <laughs> i was just gonna say it looked like it was installing itself but it really wasn't it literally just booted me into the um into the linux mint desktop environment and i was like hmm, that easy <laughs> literally if you see my little comments on the um, on my notes that i usually do to just keep in track for you guys and to see where things are going and how i'm handling things uh you would see like why how come is it possible that linux mint just booted itself without me having to install it little did i know it really wasn't installed basically your girl I have, i'm just gonna continue I, i'll just continue your girl um continued on and uh started testing trying to install lutris trying to install uh, wine I think I was installing as well as what else I was installing most probably steam I was trying to install all of these three um, and then booted up my camera and OBS obviously so I can record it for you guys and um, I literally just started installing Lutris and all of its dependencies and then it just kind of hit me you're running out of disk space I'm like Girl, I think I'm cheap. I have disk space, okay? I have plenty of disk space. But not on my flash drive. Basically, it didn't even install. I, it didn't even cross my mind that Linux Mint did not install my machine. I had just kept using it just as it was until I stumbled upon you have 280 megabytes of space available as you can imagine most of the installations took about 200 megabytes off of the space available already so by the time i tried installing my beautiful game and booted it it was already gone obvious basically couldn't record and everything crashed and grumbled and i started looking for a solution i started trying testing like what's going on at this point i still don't know that i haven't installed it properly <laughs> that's the dumbest thing you can do right but uh, i'm a clueless girl what what can you do what can you do and you know i actually managed to install lutris and everything else as well i did everything and it was flawless and i had no problem whatsoever with uh, during the installations or anything didn't get any error messages didn't get anything and uh, yeah i just started checking i started checking the the disk overall what was taking up most of the space um most of the space was obviously user the uh, arch linux first and ubuntu second and this is where it kind of hit me oh lord I should have probably done the installation I don't know what happened to me I swear my brain is still here it's still in there I woke up I put it back in into my head when I woke up in the morning I don't know anyway did that uh, checked it noticed that I haven't really <laughs> installed Lutri uh, Lutris I haven't really installed Linux Mint noticed the little disk on the desktop that said linux mint installation yeah this one upon which i started installing it it of course didn't even have the memory to install so uh, basically i rebooted my machine and said there is not gonna be any double boots i sorry my friend arch linux i will have to wipe and so I prompted Linux Mint into installing itself directly onto my PC finally 
no problem with that the installation itself was super 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 clean i managed to get everything done uh there was no there was nothing weird to be quite honest like with ubuntu with this freaking map there you know i don't even know what this map was about man. um but anyway there was nothing really odd that i didn't quite catch or i didn't like uh with the installation it was quite hands-off honestly i just left it to its own devices and it just started installing itself and doing its own thing and i'm like oh, okay okay if you need me i'll be in the other room installation process was flawless it felt like honestly like just installing another program in windows and by the time i was ready i got booted into linux mint with an amazing jingle which I love, I don't know why Linux Mint incorporated all of these things, I love them whenever you put in a USB drive or any plug-in device. So that's uh, basically my installation process, no problem whatsoever. The only thing was, I didn't manage to recover my filming files <laughs> from the first installation, or rather I should say boot of Linux Mint into my PC. Mint advised me that I will not really be able to access any of the files or make any changes until I restart my PC, which is right after I actually managed to install Linux Mint on the, on the first place <laughs> and everything was wiped and gone. I gotta say I was quite sad, <laughs> but uh, life's life, what can you do? Uh, I basically just went ahead and... I basically just went ahead and filmed everything from scratch for you guys, which still turned out fine. <laughs> I turned out fine. <laughs> and, um, oh my god, my day, day, day share, what are you doing? You're taking a free parking spot that is for other individuals. Go back basically this was my installation experience uh super easy if it hadn't been for ubuntu to kick my football around for about two days i probably would have been even more excited for linux mint but that's life i would definitely 100 percent recommend linux mint for people who have had more or less nothing to do with an operating system have no idea how to actually deal with an operating system so people that are a little bit older or people that are not that used to computers because installing it is super easy and using it is really easy as well because i am making this video after i shot the first two videos about linux mint so i love it I have literally nothing bad to say about it. You see exactly why. Well, I have one bad thing to say about it, but you'll see in the next video what this one is. I would definitely 100% stand behind this. Linux Mint is the best. I think that newbie-wise, I've been through the installation of Ubuntu and Mint now. I can definitely say that installation-wise, they're both pretty even. So I have not really faced any problems during the installation itself but for the usage and especially if you want to play games on one of these distros I would definitely recommend Linux Mint rather than Ubuntu That's my biased, unpopular opinion, likely but that's my thoughts on that I hope you guys enjoyed this one I hope this was informative and I hope you got to laugh a little bit together with me at my previous unconscious self that had no idea where her freaking brain was I hope I made your day today. You guys, if you have any comments, put them down in the comments. If you want to tell me something, let me know. If you want to subscribe or share some of the love with me, if you want to let me know about how clueless I really am, you can also do that. <laughs> Please subscribe, like, follow, social media, everything, whatever you find, you can do everything. Show me the love. I need me some love. Thank you so much for watching, spending this time with me. I really, really appreciate it. I wish you have a wonderful day or evening. I'll see you in the future, Linux users. Bye.